Brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, I'm Cuba Libre, and welcome back to Let's Play Mark of the Ninja. Now let's jump on into our next level, an ancestral home. That sounds so nice. Alright, upgrades. Um, this one's really handy. It allows you to assassinate people uh, while hiding in a hiding spot. Um, rather than having to get out of the hiding spot and then get behind them, you can just assassinate them straight from there. This is awesome. Since I almost always use smoke bombs, I really like this upgrade. It makes... Uh, it have a kind of poison gas that disables guards, so they don't just become blinded, but also um, get disabled, and so you can just walk up to them and stealth kill them automatically. It's not so important for the uh, regular guards, but it will become important soon with the new type of enemy. Um, the last one I got was... Well, hold on. How are you holding up? The symptoms are subtle at first. You feel agitated, uh, unusually aggressive. They say it can drive you mad, but I'm not so sure. I've never seen anyone live long enough to find out. I had to beg as I for more ink. It isn't even fresh. It's clumpy. Feel that? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, this is unacceptable. If as I can't straighten this out, well, uh, uh, I'll go to the source and take care of it myself. We've tracked the Count to a stronghold in Eastern Europe. He may be cornered, but be careful. He's sitting on a stockpile of weapons with his best troops surrounding him. Okay, that last upgrade I got allows you to take a corpse and this hang it up. This is your final mission. Stay sharp. This is the one Hello? I hey, remember. Hey, Tim. And there you go. There you go. This is how good I am at this game. It's <laughs> a good start, I must say. Uh, that last upgrade I got allows you to take a corpse and hang it up. Those flashes of lightning could give the guards a chance to spot you. Which um, uh, you can use to terrorize guards, so you don't have to use hangman's him. This is just an illustration of how sloppy I play this level. I, I'm not proud of my performance in this level. However, this will give me a chance to use my new upgrade. I can kill him directly from the thing. Hooray! Now you might have heard her say something about the lightning. When the lightning flashes, it, it creates light everywhere on the screen. As long as you're not um, in a hiding spot. So, you have to listen for the thunder, because the thunder cracks before the lightning flashes, which is actually backwards. But, <laughs> it's good from a game design perspective. Um, and it's a thing you have to manage, you have to be uh, aware of in a lot of different ways, uh, which will become more apparent as we go on. Your new mark has heightened your senses. Concentrate, and you can sense everything around you, even through the walls. Be careful. Pulling the wrong lever could cost you your life. So here's our new ability that we got from getting the new tattoo and more of this poison, crazy ink shoved into our Look bloodstreams. It's new gear for Karajan's troops. They can't even fight without these toys to protect them. Hey man, I uh... How oh, here's an example of a... Cutscene totally screwing me. So I... I was running... And... This dude was close enough that he heard me running inside the air vent and so peeked inside, but I couldn't even see that he saw me because the camera was moving of its own little accord. Uh, because of the cutscene. So it totally just boned me because the game keeps going even though the cutscene's playing. It doesn't freeze the action. But I get my revenge, so it's alright. 
So that new focus ability um, allows you to see things things through walls. Um, usually not that useful. You can see enemies through walls sort of as much as you need to, just between their sound and looking through doors and stuff. More useful because it allows you to see uh, what wires connect to what. And well, that's not that useful right now because everything's pretty obvious except for the one place where they show it to you. Uh, later on, the levels are filled with a lot more traps and a lot more switches and shit like that. And it becomes very uh, necessary to see what switch uh, activates what object ahead of time. So it be becomes useful then. Now this part is where it becomes very difficult. Ooh! Yeah, if you stay on the top, um, you're usually still within one of the vision cones if one of the guard's vision cones wants the lightning strikes when there's light on you. So we really... The only place you can really safely be when the lightning hits is behind one of the, uh... But luckily I now I have him distracted, so... Should have done a hangman's him, but I wasn't completely sure that he wouldn't see me when the lightning went off again, so I was just trying to play it safe there. And there's our first seal. I think it's just like get inside without being detected, which you know, you ought to be doing anyway. And this is where the game reveals boxes to you, which is interesting. Uh, because um, you've seen plenty of them in challenge rooms already. A lot of the mechanics get introduced to you first in the challenge rooms, which is sort of interesting. And then the game presumes that you haven't seen them. Um, when you get to them in the actual game. But you're like, yeah, I know. I get it. It's great. I've seen like ten of these already. <laughs> That dog was in a great position. Uh, it's, it's very rare when you can just... You can hang far enough above a dog that you're outside of his smelling radius, but you can still unexpectedly come down and knock him out. That's beautiful. And this is a tough situation. <clears throat> This guy is consistently looking to the right. So I have to do a two-stage distraction technique where first I bust the, that light, which moves him over. Then I bust the light above me, which moves him over again. Now for whatever reason, it's not letting me use my new ability to assassinate him directly from the hiding space. I think maybe it's too big or something? I don't know, it's weird. So I had to actually get out of the hiding space first. few paths, so I want to make sure that I, uh, sorry, that <laughs> I want to make sure that I explore everything, because I need to find scrolls, basically. <laughs> And every enemy. I want to kill them all for points, of course. Karajan must have lost his mind if he thinks this crazy setup can keep him safe. Um... I want to kill them all? <laughs> Even if they were would otherwise not be in my way. Good. Now let's get out of here. Because I am a poison brain-induced murder monster. As you may be able to detect already, that becomes more and more what the game is about, how the, uh, the tattoos affect your mind and uh, make you into this aggressive monster. Now, I have no idea, I mean, the, the whole plot is sort of based around that. I, in the end, in the beginning, it's just sort of this, like, you know, you're on a mission to kill this guy, for what reason, I don't know, because he attacked the ninjas. 
Yeah, this is a problem. There's a dog standing right in front of a guy, and neither of them are moving. How to get back there and do that? The dog is preventing me from getting anywhere close to the guy. It is dark, which is the only saving grace. I could walk right up to the dude otherwise. But if I do, the dog will smell me. So here, I have a brilliant idea. First I'll take out this unsuspecting schmuck. And then I will explore up here, just because I can. But, uh... I didn't know this guard was over here, and then he was gonna see uh, the, the hanging guard in the lightning, which would terrorize him. So now I have two bodies to work with. Well, I only needed one. Um, I was checking to make sure no more, no more are coming. But now I can use this corpse to uh, terrify that guy. He kills a dog for me. And now I can pick him apart at my leisure. And by at my leisure, I mean by hanging way down. And being nasty. So that was pretty well handled, if you ask me. <laughs> it's a nice little ninja. Ninja move there. Yeah, so now not only do we have the, uh, the moving light, we've also got the lightning, periodically. Lucky for me, I was fast enough to take him out before he actually saw me. After the war, most ninja went home, but not Master Tetsuji. On a journey along the Silk Road, he met a merchant who promised to restore his youth and glory. Hara's veterans spin tales of the teacups. So, up till now, the scrolls have just been sort of, like, describing how awesome ninjas are, and, like, how cool it is when they assassinate people. Um, now they start becoming more thematically related to what ultimately becomes the core of the plot, which is this guy, Tetsuji, who had the same marks that you do now, uh, going nuts, and what that might mean for you. This is me being like, alright, I want to make sure I get everything, but I'm not sure which way is the actual way to go. Although, this thing, the resupply stations, I don't even know what you'd call them, uh, tend to mark the right way to go. Once you have so. them off, they treat you like an outsider. Strong, unpredictable, and dangerous. You're as good as banished. And when your mission's over, you're done. This is all becoming very serious all of a sudden. I don't like the sound of this at all. <laughs> so I figure this must be the like the wrong way to go in the sense of, you know. Uh, uh not in the direction of the objective. You know, video games. You always go the way you're not supposed to go first, because there's probably bonus stuff, and then you go the way you're supposed to go. And this is easy enough to get. My bent walking stick. I bent this chapter. Cold. Alright, so now we've done with this little alcove place. Just a little scroll retention area so we can move on with the level. I will say that um, this series of levels um, at this sort of Eastern European city where Karajan's castle is located are probably my favorite. 
um, is sort of they become sort of the pinnacle of the main game. The whole uh, you know guards with guns and dogs and lasers and crates and all that stuff. After this part, the game kind of takes a left turn and becomes a little bit more about the platformy stuff. And then it starts to introduce these, like super powerful enemies, which cut off a lot of your abilities. But I prefer having my full suite of abilities available for every enemy, uh, but just having more enemies sort of, and traps and other hazards layered on top of each other. So I have to be more skillful rather than just like harder enemies that you can't use a lot of your abilities on. But we'll we'll talk about that as it as it comes around. Anyways, this level is a nice intro to this whole section. So here's another interesting conundrum. A big, long, open area. And, uh... Well, guy doesn't travel that far. I was like, damn it! <laughs> it was such a good idea. But of course, if I throw mine further in, and that is an example of the fact that little unsolid floors that you can fall through uh, do not totally block their vision. Now, it, sometimes they sort of do, and sometimes they sort of don't. They do block the flashlights, as you can see, uh, but they don't block the vision. So it's... I mean, it's just an example of the fact that... Uh, These are very little uh, mechanical nuances that you have to be aware of if you want to stay undetected. But now I'm too far down, their vision cone doesn't... Uh, isn't wide enough to see me that far down, so... Now... One thing I could have done was hang and kill the guy uh, that's standing still and then get away, let the patrolling guy see his hanging body in the light um, and be terrorized, but it's just a little more risky because uh, there's the chance of them seeing me perched up there in the light, so... I just decided to do it the easier way with regular old-fashioned, uh... Now these guys are easy pickings. As long as you can stay out of their vision cones when the lightning hits, you're good. Now rather than going in that normal way over the bridge, I say, hey, there's a whole laser thing over here. Why don't we play with this? <laughs> this is most likely the stealthy way in if you're ghosting. Three points. Yeah, sometimes they just have these little lockers with the, the you know the techno weapons whatever we're getting close but there are guards all over the grounds we should head down to the catacombs that will be our best shot at getting to the inner key um and it's just free points free lock picking points so you know whatever i'll take it now as far as i can tell this whole upper area of the uh Whatever this is. It's not quite the castle. I guess it's the outbuildings of the castle or something. Is, um... I think useless. I just want to kill these guys for points. That's the only reason I'm here. But, as you can see, there's a... There's a dude standing right there at the ledge. And then... And his flashlight is shining down. And then there's a dog patrolling back and forth. So when this is all over, 
I hope it was worth it. That's gonna be a tough nut to crack. See, she's giving you these ominous things about being worth it and whatever. Uh, what I did with that dog bear, um, when he sniffs the corpse, he will walk up to it, and when he walks up to it, it's not barking. That would probably trigger off the other guards that are in that room. So I had him sniff me second. That, then he will just walk past the corpse, and he doesn't care about it anymore. He'll, the, the corpse will only trigger him one time, or whatever. So I was preventing him from barking by letting him smell me. And now I'm just thinking... So that that was me doing a lot of running around and figuring out where to go first. Um, I just cut it all out because it's it's relevant. Basically, what I decided was, all right, I need to do this top part first because the bottom part is where we need to end up because we're going to take these catacombs underneath the uh, impregnable castle walls to get to the inner parts of the keep. When this is all over, I hope it was worth it. And this is actually a little self-contained loop. That contains something up top. I think it's a scroll. You can see through the floor those chests, the bonus lockpick stuff. And this is an interesting little situation. This calls for a distraction, I think. Now, it doesn't look like that sound radius actually hits either of them, at least not the one, but it totally does. <laughs> Now this, there I just got lucky. What happened was the distraction of me in the light on the right hand side made that guard start looking around with this flashlight. But when he did, he saw me killing that guy, which would have triggered an alarm. Um, but he simultaneously saw the hanging corpse, which terrorized him. So he didn't trigger the alarm. Once again, Oh, it's just an artifact, that's what it is. Points, points, points. This is just like... Free point floor. <laughs> um, so once again, terrorized corpses are just like... It, man. They're totally the way to be. There's something wrong with the air down here. When you see that foul color, move fast and try not to breathe. Yeah, so the last seal is to kill... Stealth kill every guard in the catacombs, and they really do mean stealth kill. You got to do it with your sword. Um, tool kills don't count. It doesn't mean just killing them while being stealthy or undetected. Like so, you can't kill them with your attack items. You can't kill them by terrorizing and having them shoot each other, which is too bad because at the end it would be awesome if you could do that. And you'll see what I mean. Um, you actually have to stealth kill them one by one yourself. So that's where we need to go eventually. Now, we need to deal with this up here. <laughs> Again, it's, it's... It's tough to deal with. But the dog does patrol. So, unlike normal when you just knock the dogs out, you're gonna have to kill it. Poor doggy. But the sound of it triggers both of these guards, which I wasn't exactly anticipating. So now I'm uh, improvising. Now lucky for me, that guard on the top can't leave. Um, he can see things all he wants and spaz out, but he can't move to it so he won't call an alarm on it unless he sees me individually. So that gives me just enough leeway. This is me trying to attach myself to that little piece of ledge. Aha! Now I can do the, the ledge kill. This is actually s somewhat of a problem a couple times, like right here. There's times where you really want to do that leap of faith kill where you attack guys from, um, from the
from the side of a ledge, but the ledge you're standing on is really narrow, and the game isn't really good about... Um, you don't have a huge amount of control while you're jumping. Uh, I mean, you have a lot more than some games, but it's not like Mario, where you have pinpoint control when you've jumped, so it's tough to arc yourself onto these little sidewalls. But at the same time, if you mess it up too badly, you'll end up jumping into the guy's sight range and just revealing yourself, so... It can be slightly irritating and, uh, and risky. So yes, it appears we've cleared out the whole top part of the castle. I'm just completing my exploration. But I don't think there's anything else. Let's head into the catacombs. The catacombs. Now you'll see that little green gas stuff underneath my feet. Not really relevant for this particular hallway, but that's a mechanic that's been introduced. Um, when I get into it next, you'll see it starts a little timer over my head. A little green bar. It's basically like an air bar that goes down. Um, it goes down quite quickly. <clears throat> and if it reaches the bottom, um, you're dead. But as the moment you leave the gas, it is automatically refilled completely. So you can just jump in and out of it and uh, be fine. This is kind of fun. It's kind of, I don't know, it's pretty, it's geometrical. It's really easy, again, it's just you hit what you can. Uh, you see all the power boxes along the left and right sides and little alcoves. So, uh, you just go to whichever next one you can. And that will inevitably, um... deactivate the next laser to let you hit the next power box. It's... It's like the, it would be fun to make. And it's fun to play, too. Uh, but it's just a little simple, that's all. And then we mission impossible up to scroll. I do not fear death. But with the leisure of choice, it loses its charm. So now Tetsuji's debating about whether he should kill himself. All ninjas are supposed to kill themselves after they get the special marks. So this is me saying, okay, that's the checkpoint, so clearly that's where the next place I'm supposed to go. No power boxes or anything in there, so it's just straight wall of lasers. But there must be something up there. And it turns out there is, there's just a guard. A singular guard, so um, he'll be easy to take out, but need to stealth kill them all, uh, not just because I stealth kill everyone for the points. Now, how nice is that? The guy's facing my way, I probably could just jump over him and kill him from behind, but the rat uh, comes a little distraction for me. I have to say, I've used the sort of neutral animals in this playthrough. Much more than I did in my first playthrough. Uh, they can be handy. Anytime you can have a distraction where you don't have to use one of your items, um, it's worth trying to use it. Just to conserve items for those situations where there's no way out except an item. If we get that hatch open, we can sneak right under the outer walls. Now this is just crazy lasers all over the damn place. So here we, here you can see the uh, this little tunnel is filled with gas. So I'm 
and it's you see that still goes down while I'm uh and I took two points of damage right there just bam bam you know another second probably and I would be dead um, so it's pretty serious the gas and that's that which is really annoying <laughs> like the left hand side of that laser was just outside of the radius of the body uh, deactivating it such a pain. Dick. but anyways destroying that uh, turned off the gas down here this crate is only here to slow you down such that you have to turn off the generator um, uh, uh, not the generator but the gas machine <laughs> whatever it is the thing making the gas Otherwise, you'll never be able to get through fast enough because you have to slowly move the crate out of your way. So, there's three more guards at the stealth kill for the seal. They're all... You can see the sort of sounds they're making. They're all inside that little uh, alcove to the left and it's going to open up when I bust the generator. Um, so I set the spike mine down, so hopefully one of them runs into it. But then I pick it up without realizing it. <laughs> and that guy just looks up, which is bullshit because guards never do that. They don't just look up randomly. Especially when the distraction is on the floor, the distraction is the generator blowing. Uh, he's just obviously just scripted to do that, and it's... it's bullshit. Yes, me. <laughs> so now I have to deal with three very active guards with flashlights on. Luckily, for whatever reason, this guy just goes in to stare at the, uh, the artifact. And I managed to pull him out of the way! <laughs> Stuck in a corner, but the guy stays just far enough away. <laughs> now, these guys are covering each other with their flashlight beams. It's going to be tough to kill them without being seen. But right there, I'm just quick enough. Just barely quick enough. And there was just super risky. I was just like, oh god, he's going to call in the alarm. And I don't think I have enough time to run all the way around and come from behind, so I'm just going to go for it. But I managed. <laughs> so now all those lasers are off, which allows me to get to this switch, which opens the exit to the level. Looks like there's nowhere to go but down. Be sure to hold your nose. There you go. Nine seals leveled down. And that's it for this episode. Uh, peace out. Have a good one. And I'll see you next mission.